Mount Rushmore, you know, taking a head off of Mount Rushmore and putting a Muppet's head on, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it's humor that kids understand, like you said, kids understand, because some adult humor is, the kids don't understand it at all. Yeah. Right, like, this is for kids and adults, for families. I mean, the Muppets have been a part of the Disney people, Disney company for, they've been not a part of it, a part of it, not a part of it, a part of it, but if you listen to really what Walt Disney said, I wanted to do something for children of all ages. The and Muppets are for children. Is. Look at the room. I mean, there are people, uh, they were like, there were little, there were kids next to you, you, and they were from kids' age up to people my age in the room. Yeah. That's a lot of people. It's sort of like, um, you know, like you go to a Beach Boys concert, you'll see people, kids up to grand, great grandparents. But it was a movie, you know, like I said, it, you can tell. I mean, um, I, I, I grew up working on independent pictures because most of the stuff I worked with, you couldn't call it anything else but that. But they actually moved. I mean, like you got 55 minutes on a on a. They had a pace. You got to get it going. You got to go from here to there, or or a half hour independent thing. You got you actually got 30 minutes to do a, an hour and a half movie in 30 minutes. So you have to have you got to go, but you can't go. Mm-hmm. And then half hour later go. Mm-hmm. The most independents are slow. Uh, this is, I mean, this is the thing is, is that, okay, uh, if you put Robert Rodriguez, who was a, he was an independent producer, now he's mainstream like for Disney and other people, Quentin Tarantino's, that his, his independent movies always had a flow and a beat to them. They always moved, you know, like this. But most of the movies we have seen that the crit- critics love everything. I mean, we have not been to a movie in two months that critics did not go gaga over. I mean, they've all been winners in one place or another. I mean, The Muppets basically is just out, so it hasn't had a chance, but it's going to get uh, at least two nominations, I know of, one for Best Song and Best yeah. Score. So, it was fun. It was a Muppet of a movie. Yeah, it was a Muppet. So, I mean, so we, we, we try to wrap things up with a uh, sample, you know, like, okay, would, would we pay to go see the movie? You know? That's matinee? Matinee, yeah. Matinee, and not even like it. I get some well, season prices, so... Well, yeah, I mean, I, I say matinee because, okay, if if I had a family... Oh, God. You probably, you, yeah. Actually, you go to matinee because it's cheaper, right? Because yeah. you're bringing everybody. But if I had, if I wasn't, okay, if I had children, which I actually once did have, you know, I, I would I would take them to see the movie it because a, it's is, something that they could have fun at. They'd giggle. Is it a date movie? Yeah, if you want to make them laugh. Yeah, if it's so. Oh, if somebody else would pay the movie, would I go to see it? Oh, actually, there's another one. If somebody else would pay for the movie, would you go see it? Yes. Yeah. Um, and we do know we would definitely watch it if it came on television. And I'd buy the DVD. And the DVD. The DVD's got to be that. DVD. In fact, I'm looking forward to the DVD. <laughs> Which is funny. Oh, I don't even have to buy the DVD. You know why? Why? I'm with, I'm with Disney. I'm with the Disney Entertainment, which means I can get us a screener. Yeah, but the screener's not going to have all those outtakes. It's a screener. It's got the outtakes. I can it get, does. Uh, okay. I'll let you in a secret. I can get a thing now with uh, Jack Black and um, and Steve Martin, a screener with all of the. I can get us a have them send us the DVD out with okay. all the outtakes. In See, it. so when we say would we go to. I guess we're probably pickier than most people. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just uh, we choose, we, we cut, here it is, because we have X amount of money to go see movies, and, and we have to pay to go see them. They don't let us, other than the screeners, we can't we pay like everybody else. Then, see, the screeners we can get by with, because when you write on a thing, you know, they still have to say, you know, were you paid to do this or such and such? No, we have to mark that all the time, because mm-hmm. they're getting nitpicky now. But if, if we're paying our own money to go in, then we don't even worry about the nitpicky because we're paying our own money. Mm-hmm. But it's, um, you know, generally, I mean, there's some movies I've really liked, but I got off, I'll never would pay to go see them, and I wouldn't watch them on television. I mean, um, okay. Well, could, for example, some movies are meant to be seen on a big screen. Yeah, on a small screen. It's, it's, it it loses good. some of its effect. If you've got a big screen at home, it's great. But there, there are some... Like, if it's worth it to go watch it on a big screen. Now, there's always the, the movies that you fill in with 
you know, I want to go out, I want to see something different, then you go. Yeah. But there's movies, for me, when you go pay to see it on a big screen, I like to see movies that are intended to be on a big screen. Yeah. That you cannot get the same but experience nowhere near at home. Most independent films are not meant to be on a big screen. I can, I can tell by the photography. The, it's photography that's washed out, it's more than likely because it is blown up beyond its capability of being seen on the screen in the room. But um, this movie, um, you know, was meant to be seen big because they're not going to be able... Uh, you can maybe with a high def, but I guess you're going to have to letterbox it for the simple reason. There's too much stuff going around. Too much on the right and left and the top. Here's the problem. It's not only right and left, it's top and bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have a, a widescreen television set in, in, in us. Really high def will get it in, but you have to watch the corners of the movie, folks. Yeah. Because there's all kinds of stuff going on in in the background. There's there's actually a whole lot to see in that entire scene. Yeah. So it, it is something. It's a movie you got to go see a few times to catch all the stuff that's actually going on in them. But in French, they call it mise en scene, which means everything within the scene. They're playing Barnum and Bailey in the scenes. Well, and this is one of those ones, I don't know about you, it's like you're working on stuff and you want a movie in the background, is a lot of times it's like I have some of the lighter, more fun movies in the background that you can pay attention to periodically versus some that are real dramatic that you have to sit there and watch. Oh, but the trick is there's catchy music in this <laughs> one. So you're, but the problem is the music because you said... Well, I'm sure that'll do it, the soundtrack. Well, yeah, the soundtrack you know is out there. But, yeah. um, but the music will sit there, you know, if instead of doing what you're doing, what you end up watching a movie. Mm -hmm. It's like um, watching White Christmas. Every time the musical numbers come up, you stop doing what you're doing. You've seen a bloody movie a zillion times. But, it, 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 like I said, this is the unique thing. I've really never seen independent musicals made. Never seen independent musicals made because they don't have the budget for it. But um, it is nice to see a big budget movie, mm -hmm. really, with people. I mean, I don't take it anything away from the little guys making the independent, but the trick is, folks, you got to make money. You want to make that second movie, you better make money on your first movie. Well, one of the things is when we look at the movies, you look at it from uh, how they're made, they're creating it standpoint, more of a technical standpoint, where I kind of look at it more of the pure enjoyment. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, saw, we saw really... You know, because we're, you know, it's we're, fun. We're, we're, we're digressing, but we did see a movie. She really hates subtitles on foreign movies. So we did, but you have to go see foreign movies every now and then. We, you know, so we did go see one that was a, at that moment it was the flavor of the month. And we did pay to go see it too, so. But it was winning all the festival stuff and then it didn't even get into the long list. So it, uh, well, if it's a good movie, you forget that there's subtitles. Yeah. You know, and uh, so, but um, it was actually it was a good movie. It was made, it was meant oh. for 3D, not for 2D, like we saw it. We knew it was meant for 3D. We could tell by the way it looked on the screen. And for some god unknown mm -hmm. reason, they showed it. We actually got a 2D print of a 3D movie. But mm -hmm. um, no, but the Muppets was a lot of fun. And I can, the way I look at it is, I look at it as a version of the Polar Express that actually come close to breaking even, unlike the Polar Express, which means. You'll see... Didn't that it break even? Oh, I guess eventually. Eventually it broke yeah. even. It cost... Mm -hmm. They made it three times, I think. But the Muppet movie is close to its figure. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they're spending like $150 million to reintroduce the Muppets because they want to do new Muppet... Yeah, new, new Muppet movies. New Muppet there's movie, a lot of... specials. There's a lot of uh, merchandising that goes along with it. See, I don't think that... Um, I, I don't think... It's a rebooting of the franchise. Yeah, but, I don't think that the Muppet movie, Muppet series was killed because of a uh, lack of interest. I think it was killed because it really got awful hard to do. The TV series couldn't be done anymore because, I mean, oh, look at the staff want, you're having. Oh, you know what? They wanted lower production costs. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so they, they moved out of the country to get lower production costs. And the problem is eventually the production costs cut up, caught up to them where they went in England too. So it just came to an end. You know, which it shouldn't have done it because it should have, um, they just simply, here's the thing, <laughs> that Muppets could have been done for less money than what they did it for. They overdid way too many scenes, overdid it, it was overkill. Mm -hmm. That's because anytime you put people in charge of a mm -hmm. movie that are in love with the characters I in the know, movie. I know, but it just shows up and they're having so much fun during the movie. 
Yeah, because I mean, of course, it can just kind of affect your budget. But <laughs> no, because I, I remember um, there was a, a, a woman that was um, over on the Universal lot that basically the cameraman just totally loved her. They just gave her God too much time on camera, and they, you know, what killed her career? What? Because the cameramen were simply spending too much time photographing her, and it was too much film being too much. They had to go back and then do what they were supposed to do. Even the woman basically had a 40-year career, mm -hmm. long career, you know. But she just was so. The, the, they loved her so, they so loved much. Her they wasted so much, so much time. They wasted focus. too much time, and that's what you don't want to do. You you want to put people that are watching a movie, that are making a movie, that don't have an emotional attachment. These people all had emotional attachments. Everyone right down the line that worked on this movie did. Okay, but I think it, over in the long run it will end up paying off. Oh, it will pay off, but the trick is it probably should reboot. I think I, it'll reboot the franchise. I reboot the franchise. I'm looking. Okay, so here, here's the part is if, if you didn't have people in there that totally loved it, would you have had a similar result? Well, with the, that, they said the Disney people bent over backwards. Yeah. To help make the movie, I'm always telling the Disney people they, had make, they got really got happy. Because he also pictures. what? I mean, there's no thing you know, we're going to when they're taking flash pictures. She's over there with a finger pointed towards people. Well, because they also know that if you reboot it, they know how valuable a franchise like this is long term. If it yeah, gets rebooted. if it gets rebooted, and this Which is, is why reboot. they would give this it all. This is the whole theme of the all about getting them back together again after years away. That's it. This to the Disney company, it made sense. We have a way to get the Muppets back mm -hmm. out there again. You make a Muppet movie, make and them. and you make the movie about getting them back together. And it's not, it's not the movie that's going to make the money. It's the ancillary markets in this case, mm -hmm. because they will sell DVDs with the Muppet movie. They because the the extras will not be there on downloads. Mm -hmm. They won't be there. The only way you're going to get the you, buy, you have to buy the DVD. Which means they're going to down, they're going to have downloads and they're going to have DVD sales, yeah. and they'll bring it out as specials. I mean, um, uh, so also you look at probably you know back they have there hasn't been a Muppet Christmas special in a long time. Oh, that would be good. And because uh, you don't see as many of the like Charlie Browns anymore. No, but they are there. They, have, they are making new Charlie Browns, folks. I have seen the new Charlie Browns. Yeah. They are making new, but the Muppets are have been reborn. And they're doing good enough that uh, they're doing. Okay, here's the way: you spend like 150 million dollars, which is what I think this all ended up with. Is 150, which well, that includes the advertising budget. That's advertising, all that stuff. 150 million to reboot a billion dollar. I business. know. That sounds like a no-brainer. It's, it's basically you're spending 10 cents for every dollar you expect to make this yeah. job. So it's a real good. That's why. Uh, that's why I'm guessing that a company that is known for basically going crazy about spending too much money, let them run. Yeah. Because they knew there was nothing more than, this is really a really well made advertisement. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> that people will watch over and over again. <laughs> because it is, there's no difference between this movie and the television show. Because it's all about rebooting the Muppets, as everybody connected with the movie, may, knew it was. It was when they were kids. They saw that TV show. Why did they write the script at about that TV Make show? TV show, and then going back to see the Muppet Theater. And the Muppet Theater. It was all about their. They rebooted something as they totally remembered it was, and did not deviate it from it. I think that was. Um, uh, was one of the guys, what was it, the, produ the producer, Todd, said he, one of the, I think one of the big problems we have was we remembered too much. <laughs> I, I could just imagine them all in a room and they're trying to work things out. And they're all going like, but I remember this and I remember this and I remember this and let's include this and let's, and these are all from their memories from their six-year-old self. Yeah. And right? The, the one guy and, said. And, and, you know, and then it's also, you know, like the one guy, I got kids that are watching the Muppets. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, so you get his, you got his, his kids review of, you know, what do you think? I don't, that's not what it was like, that's not, okay. And then you could go back and tell, you know, Jason, we didn't do it right. Mm -hmm. They said, what do you mean we didn't do it right? Because he actually watched those episodes and, <laughs> and, oh, okay. And then, oh, you know, what? We were wrong. You know, then that's the problem. We're doing it.